Welcome to Optical Communication Playlist. Here in this session, I'll be going to explain Windows Spectral Bands of Optical Communication. So here in this session, I'll be discussing different windows of optical communication with major key components of optical fiber. And those major key components of optical fiber are fiber, light sources, photo detector and optical amplifier and how that history that have been revolved in optical communication. So all those things that I'll be discussing in this session. So see when we talk about optical communication windows then basically there are three windows. First window that is happening at 850 nanometer. So I'll mention that one by one so it will be more clear to all of you. See first window that is happening somewhere around exactly at centered at 850 nanometer. This is what first window. Second window in optical fiber that is there at 1310 nanometer. 1310 nanometer second window is there so let me make it here first so second window that is happening at 1310 nanometer and third window that is happening at 1550 nanometer so this is what third window in optical communication. So this is where it is happening. So third window that is happening at 1550 nanometer. See this first window that is even referred as short wavelength region. So this first window that is even referred as short wavelength region. The second window that is referred as O band. And this third window that is referred as C band. So this is how we usually communicate in optical communication. First window that is there nearer to uh, centered at 850 nanometer referred as short wavelength region. Second window that is happening at 1310 nanometer referred as O band and third window that is happening at 1550 nanometer and it is referred as C band. Now see when we talk about attenuation so that is very important parameter and with respect to attenuation we can have components of optical communication like fiber light source optical detector and optical amplifier so first i'll make a graph of attenuation so by this color let me draw first that attenuation curve Now see, if I say, see this is what curve of attenuation. If I say this is where attenuation is maximum, it is 10 and over here it is scaled to 1. So somewhat this kind of graph is there for attenuation. Now if you observe this attenuation then attenuation is minimum for this third window. Attenuation that is minimum for third window. So one should understand this window third window that is having minimum attenuation.
so it should be clear to all what it explains is how much attenuation will happen as signal propagates along with optical fiber and attenuation is minimum with this third window so this is how graph is there even you will be observing for this window i have drawn it little mistaken like see it should be like this and then it should happen but it is fine like see then after there is one more spike which is happening that is at 1310 nanometer there even attenuation is less but minimum is there at 1550 so attenuation explains you how much signal will get attenuated as it propagates along with optical fiber now see <clears throat> how things have happened in early 1970s in early 1970s people have used this first window only and when they have used this first window at that time optical sources that is been made up of gallium aluminum arsenide and there were silicon photo detector so silicon photo detector and gallium aluminum arsenide that have been used so if i mention that here optical sources by this red color see optical sources were gallium aluminum arsenide so that is what working from 772 almost 1000 region so i'm just mentioning it here gallium aluminum arsenide so optical sources that is what used in early 1970s right so that was functioning in this region then after there were revolution of optical sources and optical detector and people have used indium gallium in indium gallium arsenide phosphide and that is what working in the range of 1260 to 675 nanometer so i'm just mentioning it over here indium gallium arsenide phosphide i n g a a s p so indium gallium arsenide phosphide so these were optical sources material that have been utilized see this is what people have utilized in 1970s and this is what people have utilized in 1980s and for detection of signal for detection of signal sensitivity or one can say responsivity that is very important so sensitivity that is what people have used with silicon material for photo detector in 90 early 1970s so when you use silicon material to detect a signal at that time there is a problem where uh, above 1000 nanometer wavelength water molecule absorbs a signal bit more so that you cannot extract original information above 1000 nanometer wavelength so if i draw a graph of responsivity then for silicon material see in 1970s silicon was used in photo detector so silicon is having this kind of responsivity graph see this is a graph of silicon responsivity where you will be finding signal is getting degraded as you approaches 1000 nanometer right and in 1980s people have used indium gallium arsenide as a photo detector and it is having very good responsivity curve see this black color that is what responsivity curve
so in early 1970 silicon was used and because of water molecule absorption above 1000 nanometer signal cannot be detected but in 1980s people have avoided hydroxyl ions and they have used metallic material in fiber cable so that they can avoid that water molecule absorption and they have improved responsivity by using indium gallium arsenide and if you see the graph of responsivity for indium gallium arsenide then that is this and for gallium germanium material responsivity was like this so in 1980s people have used indium gallium arsenide and germanium for photo detection right so photo detection that is even very important parameter that one should know now here i have given some basic information regarding three windows right first window that is happening at 850 nanometer short wavelength region second window at 1310 o band and third window at 1550 nanometer which is there in c band and in early 1970s people have used 850 nanometer wavelength region but as devices have upgraded with material people have started to use 1310 nanometer and 1550 nanometer band where one can observe here by this orange color attenuation graph so that is minimum at 1550 band but at this 1550 band there is a problem of the signal dispersion so signal dispersion that is minimum at 13 10 nanometer band so third band sorry second band that is having advantage second band second window has minimum dispersion second window that is having minimum dispersion so that is how <coughs> windows have been utilized so this is what very basic information that i just want to convey to make sure how people have used different window for optical communication now after viewing this video one can understand how these windows have been utilized for optical fiber communication and nowadays one can observe technology has advanced a lot and this window which is what happening from 1200 nanometer to 1600 nanometer that is very widely used for wdm technology and raman amplification that is what the basic phenomenon which is what we are using it nowadays and you will be observing internet speed that is increasing because of optical communication because of broad band which is been utilized from 1200 nanometer to 1600 nanometer I hope that you have understood this session you can give your valuable suggestions definitely based on it in future i'll make videos thank you so much for watching this video please give your suggestions here thank you